It's Monday, September 11, and this is your Bobby List Today Evening News Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Our top story, tragedy struck this afternoon at Salters, St. Michael. An elderly man lost his life while several others suffered neck, back and leg injuries. Our Anmar Boyce was at the scene. Yet again, Barbados has recorded another road fatality right here in Haggett Hall, St. Michael. It was just around 1 p.m. this afternoon where this was the scene of a three vehicle smash up involving a minibus driven by 41 year old Nigel Burroughs and two cars. 70 year old Kishore Sam Thani Thani, the driver of the light blue Kia, sadly lost his life. Are at this time conducting investigations into the circumstances which resulted in a road fatality which occurred sometime after 1 p.m. this afternoon here at Salters Road, St. Michael, involving a minibus and two motor cars, which resulted in the death of a 70-year-old Christchurch resident and injury to five passengers aboard the minibus who all complained for back, neck and leg-related injuries. Three of those persons were transported to the QH by ambulance for medical attention. Our investigations are continuing at this time. At the scene, the wife of the deceased, a well-known medical doctor, Vijaya Samthani Thani, was visibly distraught and had to be comforted by other family members. There is an urgent appeal by Inspector Cobbler for motorists to be more cautious on the road, especially now school has reopened. I'm Anmar Goodrich Boyce, reporting for Barbados Today. Thanks, Anmar. In other news this Monday, a call for urgent changes to the justice system as a new legal year got on the way today. Reverend Dr. Adrian Smith told the annual service at the Calvary Moravian Church that the justice system is in need of a major facelift and it must start with those in the profession. Stressing the need for a new mindset, Reverend Smith says there are too many people in the wrong places. Too often, brothers and sisters, we have the wrong people in the wrong places. Sometimes it is for popularity, political reasons, or selfish gain. But we have too many square pegs in wrong holes, whether by election or appointment, and I call upon the legal fraternity that you must take a stand to get the right people in the right places. So often we allow people not to perform and to still remain. But we're seeing a society where, unless you perform, you can't remain in the position. And thereby, brothers and sisters, it raises for us the issue of being committed to performance and doing what is expected of Meanwhile, Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson today served notice that changes are coming to improve the delivery of justice, expressing concern about the upsurge in gun crimes and its link to the drug trade, so Marston said they will be using the drug treatment court even more to lessen the number of drug offenders before the court. He also revealed that the registration department will be restructured to ensure seamless operations. In addition, the Chief Justice pledged to expand the mediation project, which settles uncomplicated civil cases. One of the island's newest political parties is vowing to stamp out corruption if elected to office. United Progressive Party leader Lynette Isman told a political meeting in Christchurch yesterday that corruption is at the root of every problem in Barbados. And she says it's time for Barbadians to speak out. And the reason that people can get away with corruption in Barbados at every level is that the decent people in Barbados, and I believe that the decent people are in the majority, the decent people in Barbados are not prepared to raise their voices, at least up until yesterday. I am hoping that today people are prepared to get a little bit crazy and say that you are not in favor of the corrupt practices that many Barbadians engage in. The new school term is off to a smooth start and a veteran educator is hoping for changes to the educational system. Former principal of the Bay Primary School and chairman of the Men's Education Support Association, Grant Lee Osborne, is urging the country to get back to the basics. As he addressed a function in his honor at the weekend, Osborne, who reflected on his experience as an educator, 
expressed concern that society has abandoned valued landmarks that contribute to its success. Talking value. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, do not remove the old landmark. And the old landmark has been removed. The landmark of love. The landmark of love has been removed. That they get from them. And you know what landmark is important. If you buy some land, you buy your mark. I got some pure land, you want to put your cover. <laughs> and it's going to be costly, you got problems, it's going to be costly, don't you want to get us up here. We are facing difficulty, and it's going to be costly us because of all our marks of the moon. The former principal says he provided instruction in and out of the classroom for his children and he's urging teachers to adopt a more hands-on approach as they guide the nation's youth. These boys, I told them, I'm not your teacher, I'm your big what? Big man. I'm not your teacher. I am your big father. And I tell them, have a problem, don't care what it is. Come and tell me, I am your confidant. If you should establish that rapport with children today, and become confident for their confidence. They will tell the teachers their problem, and some of the problems will be solved because they have to work in whom they can trust. Now, earlier in our afternoon update, as we reported on the start of the new school term, we incorrectly identified the new principal of Combe Mare. The former principal of Coleridge and Paris School is the new principal for Combe Mare School. There's regional and international news after this short break. Morning, Miss Oya. Morning. <laughs> you again. So you're washing cars now. Well, I can't keep up with you at all. Yes, girl. You know they've got provisions to sell in slow. Mm. And I don't sell nation newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I'm washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It clean. But you're going in very early though? Yeah, I'm just going early so I can read the bar better sit there online before work starts. Right. Well, you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I've got a special boo here that I've got it showing me. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh, you too. All right. What that paper is? She can see clearly when the dirt is gone. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To the region now, where damage assessments and recovery efforts are continuing in earnest, Antigua and Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown says he has instructed his bankers to take the sum of 100,000 EC dollars, that's 74,000 Barbados dollars, from his personal savings account to assist with the rehabilitation of the storm battered Barbuda. And while expressing confidence that at least three million U.S. dollars could be raised from domestic sources, Brown today made an impassioned plea to every Antiguan to also pledge monies to the rebuilding effort. The Gaston Brown administration last week ordered the evacuation of the estimated 1,800 people on the Sister Isle after it was decimated during the passage of Hurricane Irma, which also claimed the life of a two-year-old child. Brown told legislators today that since then, Barbudans who were never given legal ownership of their lands will now be allowed to purchase that land for $1. In Cuba, 10 people have died as a result of Hurricane Irma. State television reported that the deaths resulted after a building collapsed during the passage of the system. Across Savannah, there are reports of widespread flooding and some communities are still without power. A major helping hand for five Caribbean islands battered by Hurricane Irma. Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, the British Virgin Islands, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos will each receive U.S. $200,000 from the Caribbean Development Bank to help fund the cost of emergency relief supplies, transportation, water and sanitation resources, roofing materials for emergency shelters and community buildings. In addition, the CDB has offered immediate response loans of up to U.S. 
$750,000 to the affected countries. It has also provided $150,000 to the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency to assist with preparations from mobilizing and coordinating disaster relief. And on the international scene, Pope Francis has warned that history will judge world leaders who do not act as he blasted climate change skeptics in the wake of Hurricanes Irma and Harvey. The pontiff said that the recent storms means the effects of climate change could be seen with our own eyes. There have been four major Atlantic hurricanes in less than three weeks. But U.S. Environmental Protection Agency head Scott Purit said it was an inappropriate time to discuss what role climate change may have played. And that's our news, but there's more on our website, www.bobbydestoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media, in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And don't forget 96.9 FM, that's Mix 96.9 FM for the very latest. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening. Thank you.